Hello dear students, welcome to pen and paper chemistry. We are on to, we are doing a means and uh, this is part 4 of the set of videos on amines and we shall be covering nomenclature today. Don't forget pen and paper in your hand. Nomenclature of amines can be done in two ways. The common system where we name amines as alkyl or aryl derivatives. So like ethylamine, methylamine, propylamine and so on. IUPAC system says that we have to name it as a derivative of the parent alkane. So we have the alkane and we attach the amine to it. Since this is a vowel, we do away with the E at the end and this becomes alkanamine. Simple. So let's get going with a few examples and again I repeat, unless you write it with your own hands, you will still be looking out for more videos in order to understand the topic. So in your best interest, please grab a pen and paper and let's write it together. You see the first formula? Try it. We have already covered IUPAC nomenclature on the channel. So why don't you give it a try? Please pause the video. I am sharing the structures with you. Go ahead. Try the first one. Second one. Third. Look at where the NH2 is. Fourth. The third and the fourth structure, they differ in the fact that here it is the hydrogen from the carbon which has been replaced by the NH2 group. Whereas here, in this case, it is the hydrogen of the nitrogen which has been replaced by the methyl group. So how are you going to name this as? Remember, this is not a complete chain because this is not one complete chain of carbon atoms. It is the carbon atoms which have to constitute a long chain. Should we go ahead and try an answer? Let's start with the first one. So you see over here, my first one is only one carbon atom. So one carbon atom means what is the word root? Remember the simple golden rule for nomenclature. So you put a prefix, you put the word root, word root gives you the number of carbon atoms, then you put the words in, in or ein which tell you whether it is saturated or unsaturated. It is also called as primary prefix. And then you mention the functional group, the primary functional group. Yes, this is how the name IUPAC names are uh, written. So let's go ahead. Oh, you've already written the answer. So the word root over here, carbon, one carbon, so meat. It's a saturated compound, so ane. And NH2 group, so it's amine. E cancels out and we have methanamine as our first compound in the IUPAC system. Common name, yes, it's a derivative of the methyl. So we have the common name as methylamine. Okay, okay. Second one. Now, there are 1 and 2 and it's a straight chain saturated. So, we will call it as, right, eth, ane, plus amine. So, E cancels out and we have the compound as ethanamine. Now look at the common system of nomenclature. CH3, CH2 is what group? Yes, this is ethyl group. So this is in the common system known as ethyl amine. Next one, look at the chain. So I have got this as the longest chain, continuous, longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. So let me number it 1, 2, 3. 
or I can also number it as 1, 2, and 3. In each case, my nitrogen gets position number 2. So how do I name it as? At the second carbon atom, I have the NH2 group. So this becomes amine. Now here, will you put it as a prefix or will you put it as a suffix? Think about it. Yes, it will come as a suffix because this is the only functional group. There is nothing to compete against it. So we have over here word root eth. No, it's not eth. What is it? Yes, there are three carbon atoms. So prop. Saturated, unsaturated. It's saturated in. And now look at the amine. The amine is at the second carbon atom. So two amine. Now join the parts. So we have here propen two amine. Interesting. How are you going to name it in the common system? Now in the common system, this is an iso group. Remember, the NH2 group is at the secondary carbon, a carbon which is attached to two other carbon atoms. Hence, the common name is simply isopropyl amine. We shall focus more on the IUPAC system of nomenclature because as the structures get more complex, it is easier and more convenient to name it according to an organized system rather than a random one. Now the fourth structure, if you remember, I just now mentioned that this is not the longest chain because this chain is broken by nitrogen. So I cannot number it as 1, 2, 3. That would be absolutely wrong because we don't number the nitrogen. I have to make a choice between the two methyl. Since they are of the same length, does not make a difference. So I have only one carbon atom. Now look at the methyl. It is coming on the nitrogen. So the hydrogen of the nitrogen is replaced. In other words, this is named as an alkyl substitute. But the methyl is on the nitrogen. So how do I say that, that the methyl is on the nitrogen? I will say N-methyl. That means my methyl is on the nitrogen group and then rest of the carbon comes as the alkane. So meth and uh, mene. N methyl methanamine. Clear? Okay. Try naming this compound now. See, look for the longest chain of the carbon atoms, consider it as the main chain and your compound will be named as alkane derivative of that chain. So whether it is going to be these two carbon atoms, this single carbon atom or this single carbon atom. Try naming this, pause the video, try it yourself. So while naming this compound, our carbon number one carbon number two because the functional group is attached to CH2 group not one and two but one and two. Now look at the hydrogen of the nitrogen which has been replaced by methyl and which has been replaced by methyl. So how am I going to name it as? Yes we will call it as N. N. Now that means nitrogen the hydrogen of the nitrogen has been replaced two times and what are those two groups which are replacing it yes two methyl groups n n dimethyl rest remains our parent compound eth and uh, mean clear whereas if i have to name it as in the common system. So if you see in the common system, there's a ethyl group, there are two methyl groups. So how are we going to name it as? Ethyl, dimethyl, I mean something like that? Yes, but remember we'll try and uh, follow the IUPAC rules. So ethyl, dimethyl, I 
Amin. Okay? Or is it the other way around? The common system does not lay down any rules like that. So we can write it as dimethyl ethyl amine or ethyl dimethyl amine. That is why it is better to stick to the IUPAC system. Would you like to try some more of the alkyl derivatives? If you want to practice some more questions, you can do it from your uh, own textbooks or at the end of this video also, I will try and give you some structures to practice. Now let's name some of the aromatic compounds. So if you see our NH2 group is attached to a benzene ring in this compound. In the common system, long before we got the IUPAC system, this was known as aniline in the common system. And IUPAC says, yes, we are happy to accept this name for IUPAC nomenclature as well. Alternately, if I name it as a derivative of the parent hydrocarbon, which in this case is a benzene, so I will have the parent compound that is benzene plus the functional group which is amine and we cancel out the vowel and we have here benzene amine. So benzene amine or aniline both are accepted names for this compound. Now look at the next one. Here I have introduced a methyl group. Now, when we introduce a methyl group, if you see, our parent hydrocarbon changes. What is the parent hydrocarbon now? Yes, toluene. Now, what you've got here is you have introduced an NH2 group. How are you going to name this compound? First position, second position, yes. So, we have the IUPAC name of this compound as to amino toluene. At the second position, with respect to the CH3 group, we have the NH2 group. How are you going to name it in the uh, common system? In the common system, the two are ortho with respect to each other, one next to each other. Remember the ortho, meta, and the para positions? Yes. So if I have a primary group over here, position 1 next to it is ortho, position 2 next to it is meta, position exactly opposite to it is para. So according to the common system, we are going to name it as ortho toluidine. That means from toluene we have derived an amine. Would you like to try naming this compound, remembering and also noticing that the CH3 group is not part of the ring. So our parent hydrocarbon here still remains as good. Now try naming the, yes, it still remains as benzene or aniline, right? And then the hydrogen attached to the nitrogen are replaced by methyl groups. How are we going to name this compound? Just pause the video, try naming this compound yourself. It will give you good confidence. Yes, nitrogen and nitrogen. We are replacing the hydrogen on the nitrogen by two methyl groups. So dimethyl, the parent compound is either benzenamine or it can also be aniline. So NN dimethyl aniline. Both are correct according to the IUPAC nomenclature. What about the common system? Yes, that will also be the same NN dimethyl aniline because in the common system also we call it as aniline that is what we mentioned at the beginning of this so you see we've completed the entire chart with which we started oh there's something where there's a gap 
How about naming this compound according to the common system? Yes, there are two methyl groups over here, NH, how are you going to name it? Did you try naming it? Yes, there are two methyl groups, so this will be dimethylamine. Okay, so some questions for practice now. Okay, go ahead now. I am sharing the formula for some compounds. N C four H nine C H two and sorry N H two. Second one C two H five hold twice N H. Probably expand the structure so that it's easier for you to name it. Next C two H five C H C H three hold twice. Fourth one. Got a benzene ring N H two B R B R B R. Look at this compound very carefully. It's something new for you. To give you an idea about this, I will introduce to you the functional group C double bond O NH2. Now this functional group is known as amide. Okay. So if I have over here CH3 CO NH2, how do I name it? one carbon two carbon there are two carbon atoms in the chain so eth it is saturated yes why saturated because there's only single bond between the carbon atoms we don't talk about the double bonds between carbon and a hetero atom it is unsaturated only if there is a double bond between two carbon atoms which is this not there over here so eth in and the functional group is amide again a e so we do away with the e and we have ethanamide and what have you replaced on the nitrogen the hydrogen of the nitrogen is replaced by what group just like ch4 becomes a ch3 when I remove one hydrogen, so methane becomes methyl. This is methane. C2H6, ethane. Ethane becomes C2H5 when I remove one hydrogen and we call it as ethyl. Our C6H6 is benzene. You remove one hydrogen, it becomes C6H5. No, it is not benzyl. Benzyl is C6H5CH2. This is benzyl. What will be C6H5? Think about it. You want the answer? I'll give it to you in the next video. Try the last one as well. I'll give you the answers to these compounds in the next video where we start with the preparation of amines. So stay tuned, stay connected and don't forget to bring in your pen and paper for the next lesson. See you soon.